The laws of success using the power of spirit to create health, prosperity, and happiness by Pamahansa Yogananda. Interesting thing happened to me a few hours ago. I was interested in doing a discussion on the laws of success by Napoleon Hill. And one of the things that I've been working a lot on, and I share this throughout the channel through the later discussions, is cleansing my subconscious mind, releasing myself from certain kinds of fear, doubt, indecision-based programming that I had learned from my past. And as a result, I have a deeper connection with infinite intelligence, which is one of the apex principles of Think and Grow Rich, as well as the Laws of Success by Napoleon Hill. So while I was doing my notes for the Laws of Success by Napoleon Hill, and I was looking to release that video today, I received a hunch directly from inspiration based conversation or imaginative based conversation that I had with infinite intelligence asking me to present to you the laws of success by Yogananda. And as I started to go through this book, I started to see the parallels between the laws of success by Napoleon Hill and the laws of success by Yogananda and a greater emphasis put on the connection to infinite intelligence in Yogananda's book. So while there's a deep emphasis on infinite intelligence and the creative faculties, the creative imagination, and just imagination in general in Think and Grow Rich, I believe that Yogananda puts a lot more emphasis on it in this book. Yet this book is very simple. It's only a handful of pages, and uh, it is contained within or contained within it the sentences are very deeply reflective upon insights that I believe is the essence of how Yogananda communicates. He's able to say a couple of sentences and then there's so much deep, profound meaning for those that are ready to understand his meaning. And the idea behind that is that communication, most of the time when we listen to something and we hear it from one state or one vibration or one state of consciousness, we understand it based on that level. And then as we elevate ourselves, as we move into a deeper connection with the source or infinite intelligence, we start to unravel deeper meanings. Now, this is something that I talk about a lot when we discuss the information from Neville Goddard, who goes through the Bible and reads various quotes from the Bible, unlocking various deeper meanings. And Einstein said this, you can't solve the problem in the state in which you created it. And I say that a sentence really has meaning based on the state that you are in when you are reading it. So what this means is that one of our goals in life is through acquiring success, we, we raise our level of consciousness, raise our level of consciousness. And in higher states of consciousness, Sentences, information, stimulus, sensory input from the external world has different meaning. So a lot we're going to talk about today is accessing this higher faculty of understanding through Yogananda's book through acquiring success. See, because for me, this journey started in 2004 when I acquired Think and Grow Rich, and I wanted to use the information to get out of $50,000 debt. And then I realized that the book is not just about getting rich not about just creating financial wealth. It's about unlocking your connection to the divine, infinite intelligence. And that's why it is said that later in the book, Think and Grow Rich, that the apex of the philosophy, your connection, the sixth sense, connection to infinite intelligence can only be understood after you have mastered all the other principles. So again, as I continue to read the philosophies of success from Napoleon Hill, the information from Yogananda and continuously evolve myself using the principles contained within this book and the other books that were released by these authors, I find deeper and deeper profound meaning and insight and I'm able to share it with you. So let's go ahead and get started. Introduction. Is there a power that can reveal hidden veins of riches and uncover treasures of which we never dreamed? Is there a force that we call upon to give health, happiness, and spiritual enlightenment? The saints and sages of India teach us that there is such a power. 
They have demonstrated the efficacy of truth principles that will work for you too if you give them a fair trial. So I'd like you to make a commitment that you are going to apply what is being discussed in this video. Give it a try. And no matter where you are in your journey, if you take this information and you apply it and you make a practice for the next 30 days that you're going to take this information and you're going to apply it with presence and then come back to this video, what is being presented to you is going to reveal even more about the success principles and to yourself. I challenge you to take this earnest request that I'm making because I want you to realize something on my journey of studying success principles is that all this information is really the same, but it's really the person that's looking at it that unlocks the power of the information. And you can go about life constantly searching for more and more books and more and more information only to come to the realization that it is you that is reading yourself in the information. But this might sound very abstract and nebulous. And to go on this journey of realization, which by the way, is the essence of self realization, which is what Yogananda's core philosophy is about. You have to take what I'm saying right here to heart. You're going to do it at a certain stage of your life if you've not already done so. And when you do it, you're going to get more value, more appreciation, more happiness, and more success found in just about every area of your life by valuing it and appreciating it even more. This is what Russell Conwell was talking about in the book, Acres of Diamonds. You have right now everything you need to create success. You are sitting on your own acres of diamonds. And this doesn't just apply for the opportunities that you have. It applies for the information that you have access to. The key is, are you going to value it even more? Are you going to take it and apply it, produce results and realize that that was the information. And then by revisiting it again, it's like reading a new book, but it's really, as I said, reading more about yourself. And the more you learn and read about yourself through reflecting upon information, the deeper of a connection you will have to infinite intelligence, the source where all information that exists in our reality comes from. Your success in life does not altogether depend on ability and training. It also depends on your determination to grasp opportunities that are presented to you. Opportunities in life come by creation, not by chance. You yourself, either now or in the past, have created all opportunities that arise in your path. Since you have earned them, use them for the best advantage. So opportunities in life come by creation, not by chance. And since you are the creator, then what you are creating is opportunity for yourself at all times. The question is, do you see them? Do you recognize them as opportunity? If you look at what you have right now, right now within your scope of awareness, you have opportunity. You have opportunity within this information. After you are done listening to this or watching this video, the next thing you do afterwards is an opportunity. The question is, do you value it as opportunity? If you start to look at what you're doing after this and value it as opportunity, more information will reveal itself. Just like more information will reveal itself from a book you are learning after you take that opportunity and value it by executing upon it, by doing it. If you use all available outward means, as well as your natural abilities to overcome every obstacle in your path, you will thus develop the powers that God gave you unlimited powers that flow from the innermost forces of your being. You possess the power of thought and the power of will utilize the utmost these divine gifts. So let's talk about thought, will and abundance. The abundance of opportunity that is available to you right now. The question is, are you recognizing? Are you valuing? 
Are you seeing it as opportunity? One of the greatest things that I've discovered on this journey of success and now teaching success principles and entrepreneurship is my own realization from 10 years of being an entrepreneur that a lot of things I used to look at before as obstacles, I now look at as opportunities. And the more I start to value things as opportunities, the more I'm able to take whatever is presented in front of me and turn it into something that I can create success with. And it starts by changing the way I look at things. Because we learn this in the Kabbalion, all is mind. The external world is reflection of you. How you experience the external world is based on how you believe reality to work, which is your thought. So what I've done is I've taken the different sections from the book and I've plugged them in into thought, will, and abundance, and we're going to discuss them. You control your destiny. Mind is the creator of everything. You should therefore guide it to create only good. If you cling to a certain thought with dynamic willpower, it finally assumes a tangible outward form. You are able to em employ your will always for constructive purposes. You become the controller of your destiny. So let's reflect upon this. If you cling to a certain thought with dynamic willpower, it will finally assume a tangible outward form. The truth is this, that everything that has assumed an outward form, everything that has materialized has been a net result of a thought. It has either been a thought that you have consciously consumed or a thought that you have consumed by allowing your mind to wander freely. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that now you're at a certain level of consciousness that you realize that the sensory input, everything that you take in via your senses, is programming the way you think, consciously and mostly subconscious. Most of our thinking is subconscious. Therefore, most of our creation is subconscious. And until we have raised our level of consciousness to a certain point, we will make the assumption, we will make the assumption that what is presented to us in the external world was luck and chance. As you raise your consciousness by applying these principles, by creating results, by following this process all the way through till completion over and over again, you gain experience, wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge plus experience. Okay? Knowledge, taking this knowledge and applying it through experience, you acquire wisdom. And when you acquire wisdom, you have an understanding. And what is the understanding? It is the understanding of how the external world, pieces in your external world, which you once thought was luck and chance, is now a direct correlation of a thought within. And thus stated, we control our destiny. The higher we raise our consciousness, the more we raise our awareness that we are the cause from within, and the more mindful we are able to create success. The power of thought. You demonstrate success or failure according to your habitual trend of thought. A habitual trend of thought. Most of your thoughts are subconscious habitual trends of thought. So you ask yourself, do you have a lot of success in your life? Or do you have a lot of failure in your life? And then sit down, reflect upon it, and see where are you the cause of that? And what can be changed? And trust that you have the knowledge within you and you have access to the knowledge and you can attract the knowledge the moment you believe that you can change it. In fact, I found through this journey, the moment I formed the belief that something can be changed about failure, right then and there, the opportunity revealed itself. That was always there. It's just that now I can see. In you, which is the stronger success thoughts or failure thoughts? If your mind is ordinarily in a negative state, an occasional positive thought is not sufficient to attract success. But if you think rightly, you will find your goal, even though you seem to be enveloped in darkness. So it starts with your thinking. Ask yourself, if you take inventory of your thoughts all throughout the day, is it predominantly negative or predominantly positive? If it's predominantly negative, then 
What you're experiencing is the materialization of those thoughts reflected in the external world as predominantly negative. If your thoughts are predominantly positive, and this is something that I've been working with throughout the journey and continuously ensure that predominantly throughout the day, my thoughts are on the positive, it is materialized as success, financial success, health and wellness success, relationship success, just about every other kind of success is a materialization of a feeling within, which is a positive, which is reflected outside accordingly in the way that you believe the way you want it to be. Fear exhausts life energy. Fear exhausts life energy is one of the greatest enemies of dynamic willpower. Fear causes the life force that ordinary, ordinarily flows steadily through the nerves to be squeezed out and the nerves themselves to become as though paralyzed. The vitality of the whole body is lowered. Fear doesn't help you get away from the object of fear. It only weakens your willpower. Fear causes the brain to send an inhibiting message to all bodily organs. So it's not the thing, but how you feel about it that cripples you. How you feel about whatever it is that you fear materializes it to be so. I've seen this play out many times and through my experience of coaching and consulting, I not only get to experience it through myself as I did on my own journey towards creating success and higher levels of success that I'm on right now, but they get to experience this through the eyes, through the experience of others. You can give somebody a situation in two people. One person looks at that situation from a place of fear and the other person looks at it from a place of joy, happiness, abundance, and bliss. And they can approach that situation and I'll see a totally different outcome materialize in direct correlation to how they feel. The fearful person will materialize as a self-fulfilling prophecy that which they fear. I've seen this many times. And the person who has no fear, who operates from a place of abundance, from operating from a place of happiness and joy, will materialize that situation, whatever it is. Even if that situation seems fearful to most people on the planet, that person will materialize that feeling to be positive and joyful. Now, I'm not professing that this is easy. This is why this is a process. And this is why I'm thinking Grow Richard has said that in order to understand the apex of the philosophy, which is that the outer world is a reflection of the inner world and you have access to infinite intelligence to guide you and all the resources are available to you, you just release them and the only thing that holds you back from releasing them is your fears. In order to understand that to deeper levels, and I'm continuously understanding this, you have to constantly and consistently apply the principles. Because the principles help you remove the smoke screens. Failures should arouse determination. Failures should arouse determination. Even failures should act as stimulants to your will, power, and to your material and spiritual growth. When you have failed in any project, it is helpful to analyze every factor in the situation in order to eliminate the chances in the future that you might repeat the same errors. So, as mentioned, as your consciousness rises, as your awareness increases, you start to cross-reference what has happened in the failure to the cause within, the thought, the way of thinking, the way of looking at the situation. If you don't see it this way, then the bias is to blame. The bias is to say it was luck and chance because it's easy to conclude that. What takes effort and exercise of the will is to look to see where you are the cause. But I promise you this, the moment you make the decision to look for where you are the cause, you will find it. Just like the opportunities that are always there that reveal themselves. Just like the teacher that's always there that reveals themselves. The answer reveals himself or itself because it says so in the Bible. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Again, that's the cause within. That's the thought. If you don't believe it's possible, then you won't see it. So believe that 
you can evolve yourself to when you experience something like rejection or failure, you'll actually get excited about it. Now I'll speak from experience in this. There were situations of failure and rejection and whatever, where I used to be really down on myself when I used to experience that. But as I continue to apply these principles, what I notice is that I actually get excited after something that someone might experience as a failure or rejection. I've gone so far on the other side of the spectrum of embracing failure and rejection that a lot of times if I talk to people about it, they simply won't understand and see how I can see happiness and opportunity in a failure or rejection. That's because they have not been applying the principles and their thoughts and their lack of understanding and their lack of wisdom present or prevents them from seeing it. That's all it is. And then finally, need for self analysis when it comes to thoughts. Another secret of progress is self analysis. Introspection is the mirror in which to see recesses of your mind and otherwise would remain hidden from you. Diagnose your failures and sort out your good and bad tendencies. Analyze what you are, what you wish to become, and what shortcomings are impeding you. One of my favorite exercises, and I've been revealing this over the course of the last handful of videos that I did, and to every single coaching and consulting client that I take on, is the one exercise that I stick with every day. And that is, with every experience that I have that is not in alignment with my vision, or I experience a sensation of fear, doubt, indecision, or scarcity or whatever negative emotion, I write it down or I type it up in my phone and I ask myself, what is the cause of this within? Why am I creating this sensation? Why is this sensation being expressed? And what I find is it comes from an experience that I've had in my past or thought that I have, which I identify with, which is part of my identity. And that's why I recommend studying the video that I did on the logical levels of or Dilt's, Robert Dilt's logical levels of change because I categorize a lot of things very easily to help me overcome when I use that model. And by identity, and I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen that video, by identity I'm talking about the self-image, the self-image, that part of you that a lot of times is unconscious, that you're not aware of. The goal is to raise your consciousness up to a point where you can identify where your self image is and then change it so that it's in alignment with your vision. And this is done through self analysis. The values and beliefs that flow from the identity are revealed to you by how you give meaning to different circumstances that happen to you every single day. What's the meaning that you give to the environment? What's the meaning you give to circumstance? What's the meaning you give to other people that you interact with? What's the meaning you give to other people that you do not interact with? And understand something that that is revealing to you about yourself. And it is revealing to you about your ability to create the success that you want. And what you do want to do is you want to rewrite all that meaning by evolving your identity, by evolving the subconscious mind programming within yourself and making it in alignment with the vision. The vision is yours. When you have a dream, when you have a vision, it is yours. It comes from the divine. We'll talk about this in a moment when we get into abundance. It is yours. It is part of this journey that you're on to teach you how to create. You get that vision and it's yours to create and it is yours. And it is revealed to you by removing layers of distortion that is uncovered through self analysis and making you in alignment in an identity level, that which is related to the vision. Neville Goddard talks about this a lot in a lot of his programs in his audios. Assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and see yourself already achieving it and feeling that that does something really powerful that exercise is it changes the self image. There's a lot of different ways of going about doing this. You can use the Neville Goddard way. You could use the way that was identified in the video we talked about on how to materialize your dreams by Paramahansa Yogananda. 
You could use the information in reality transurfing. I did a discussion on that. The Kabbalion, you could use subconscious mind reprogramming audios, which I talk about in my subconscious mind training. But the bottom line is this. Self-analysis gives you information about the identity, the self-image. Okay, this is also discussed in Maxwell Maltz's book, Psycho-Cybernetics. Gives you information about that subconscious self-image that you have about yourself. And it's that self-image that is creating reality on autopilot. So if your success that you want to create requires you to have a certain level of self-confidence and your self-image is not at the level of self-confidence of that level of success, you're going to create and materialize experiences, people, circumstances that reflect the self-image. These are thoughts that a lot of times we're not consciously aware of. But the more you raise your consciousness, the greater the ability that you will have to discover these thoughts. Will. Will is the dynamo. Along with positive thinking, you should use willpower and continuously and continuous activity in order to be successful. Every outward manifestation is the result of will, but this power is not always used consciously. So you have 24 hours in a day, and what you do within that 24 hours a day, we have to ask ourselves, is this in alignment with our vision? What we do, the actions we take, create the results. And until your self-image is in alignment with the vision, the behaviors will be in alignment with the self-image that you are not aware of that is not in alignment with the vision. And your behaviors will reflect accordingly. Every outward manifestation is the result of will, but this power is not always used consciously. So I hope this video has given a greater sense of awareness on how to become more conscious with your will. There is a mechanical will as well as a conscious will. The dynamo of all your power is volition or willpower. Without volition, you cannot walk, talk, work, think, or feel. So you already do this. You're already using your willpower. The question is, what are you using it towards? See, if your self-image is of one of health and wellness and you see yourself as healthy and wealthy inside, it is reflected accordingly by the behaviors and what is materialized accordingly. That's what happens. It doesn't require to use force. And this is where we get into the conversations we had on power versus force by David Hawkins. At higher states of consciousness, power does not include force. You don't need force. That's because at that state, you are at a self-image or a deep identity level of unconditional love, acceptance, and abundance. It is yours. So you don't need to force anything to get it. It materializes. Therefore, willpower is the spring of all your actions. In order not to use this energy, you would have to be completely inactive, both physically and mentally. Even when you move your hand, you are using willpower. It is impossible to live without using this force. So the question is, where is our willpower being directed towards? And most of it is subconscious, governed by our self-image. The creative power of initiative. What is initiative? It is a creative faculty within you a spark of the infinite creator. It may give you the power to create something no one else has ever created. It urges you to do things in new ways. The accomplishments of a person of initiative may be as spectacular as a shooting star. Apparently creating something from nothing, he demonstrates that he's seemingly impossible may become possible by one's employment of the greatest inventive power of the spirit. You have within you a connection to infinite intelligence where all information comes from. Everything that has been created in the external world, all the knowledge and wisdom comes from infinite intelligence and you have access to this. The way you get more access to this is by trusting it. How do you trust it? 
by taking initiative. How does this work? When you get an idea, do you look around to see what other people are doing and then act upon it or do you take it? If you look around to see what others are doing and you seek approval or validation or you fear criticism, then you are not tapping to the infinite intelligence that wants to give you knowledge that is not available in the external world to create something that might be polarizingly different, which might not be given to you right away, but you have to trust it first. So the more you act on that initiative that comes within you from infinite intelligence, the more you'll get access to infinite intelligence, the more self-confidence and faith you will have in yourself. There's two ways you could live your life fundamentally. You could live your life as the net result of other people's thinking, or you could live your life in connection to the divine within and pull that information and create something from the creative imagination. Napoleon Hill talks about this when we discussed the imagination video I did a few weeks ago. Creative imagination versus synthetic imagination. Synthetic imagination is taking ideas and information that you study from books, seminars, trainings, and what's available and creating something new based on combining that information, which is great. Creative imagination comes from beyond, infinite intelligence. Those that were able to create something that has gone beyond the possibilities of what exists now, at least through awareness, the key is awareness. Those were able to do that, learn to trust themselves more by taking initiative. And while they might be using some of the synthetic imagination that are available or that is available, they're also learning to trust more the creative imagination. So how do you apply this? The way to apply it is when you get an idea, take initiative and apply it right away. Take action. One of the things that I learned from Eben Pagan, which really stood out for me is he said that there was one commonality that all successful people share, and that is speed of implementation. And the moment I heard that I made a commitment to myself that I was going to practice that. So when I get ideas, I act upon it right away. I don't judge it. I don't evaluate it. I act upon it right away. And that idea turns into something. Okay, actions, there's a reaction, something happens in the external world, something moves. And it might not create the result directly like how I wanted it to create, but I promise you this, it will reveal something that tells me what next action to take. And I will follow it over and over again until success has been created, usually in ways that have never been discovered before. Habits of thought control one's life. We can a bad habit by avoiding everything that is associated to it or stimulated by it without concentrating upon it and your zeal to avoid it. Then divert your mind to some good habit and steadily cultivate it until it becomes a dependable part of you. We did a lot of discussions on habit and forming habit. And it's very clear that habits are a reflection, a materialization of thought, and also enforce certain kinds of thinking, and also stimulate a certain kind of thinking. If you create a habit of taking action and initiative and following it all the way till completion, you carve out a totally new path in reality, especially if that initiative, that idea is unique. And it's the faith and confidence that you have in that. And what we've discussed so far should help you amplify your faith and confidence, because what we're really saying is that's the right thing to do is to take the initiative even if others are not giving you any validation or approval for that. Do it anyways. What will happen is you will get access to deeper level of creative information. Why? Because you're going to get responses from taking that unique action. And that's going to give you new ideas. And that's going to force the connection to infinite intelligence because you're not going to find the answers anywhere else. 
but you're going to have faith that you will find the answers and it will be given to you from within. So that's interesting. I want you to reflect upon that for a moment. When you trust the creative imagination, when you take initiative on your own unique ideas, and you form the habit of execution on those ideas all the way till completion, you're going to form unique pathways and you might not have access to knowledge that's available through books and seminars and so forth on that unique path. But because you have faith that you will find the answers, the answers will come to you and they'll come from infinite intelligence from within. If that's not the essence of building self-confidence right there, I don't know what is. Those that have a high degree of self-confidence, and we talked about this when we did the discussion on the self-confidence formula, are not interested in the opinions of others before they act because they know. And that's not from a place of arrogance. You see, what we're talking about here is not arrogance. We're talking about faith in the divine. That requires confidence. How do you accelerate this? When he talks about meditation, by the power of concentration and meditation, you can direct the inexhaustible power of your mind to accomplish what you desire and to guard every door against failure. All successful men and women devote much time to deep concentration. They're able to dive deeply within their minds and to find the pearls of right solutions for the problems that confront them. If you learn how to withdraw your attention from all objects of distraction and place it upon one object of concentration, you too will know how to attract at will whatever you need. All the answers are within you, and you will find the answers through meditation. That's why it's important to practice meditation, to incorporate meditation. The way that I am today has been a net result largely from my meditation practice. I believe so. I started meditating since 2008, so we're talking 11 years now. And so there's no surprise then where I have this ability to tap into infinite intelligence and in such clarity where it feels like infinite intelligence talks. I have a conversation directly with infinite intelligence. And the ideas that flow from that conversation are manifested in the various things I do to create success. It's because I've learned to tune out the noise, which by the way, physiologically happens so from the meditative practice. See, in the beginning, it wasn't easy because my mind would wander and all kinds of things. But I sat there and I stayed disciplined. I said, I can control my mind. These distractions where mind is going onto this thing and that thing is causing me to look for answers in the external world. The answers are within me. And I will find the answers when I silence these thoughts. And the answers started to reveal themselves. And the connection has been established so deeply that the answers reveal themselves in the most unexpected places so fast and so frequently that oftentimes now, if I look for answers for a problem or anything that I want to solve, all I have to do is say, subconscious mind, I trust and have faith that you have connection to infinite intelligence where all nor origins of information or all information originates from. Give me access to the answer to this that I'm facing right now. And right then and there, the answer shows up and I take action on that initiative. Power of divine will. Divine will has no boundaries. It works through laws known and unknown, natural and seemingly miraculous. It can change the course of identity, wake the dead, cast mountains into the sea, and create new solar systems. By the way, if you haven't read Autobiography of the Yogi and, and study some of the far-out powers that are available to us using the power of the mind, I recommend that you do so. It's amazing how much access to power that goes beyond even the comprehension of beliefs or proof or whatever that other people have about what the mind can do. It's amazing how much power we have access to if we practice this information. Man, as an image of God, possesses within him that all-accomplishing power of will to discover through right meditation how to be in harmony with the divine will is man's highest obligation. So we mentioned this earlier. Your vision comes from divine. It comes from God. And this vision is your exercise. It's your exercise. 
Your goal is to take this vision and apply these principles and bring it forth. When you do this, you'll, have get, you'll get access to deeper levels of information. The very books that you read, as mentioned earlier, will start to reveal even more information. In fact, the verses in the books, the Bible, spiritual texts, will reveal to you information that a lot of people will not see, but you will see it. And this information will be so vivid and clear to you, and it will stimulate a deeper connection to infinite intelligence, that more information will come to you, and you'll take this information, and through initiative and applying the principles, laws of success, you will create success. And then you'll find something very interesting. You'll get into the deeper mysteries of how the world works and how this stuff works, and you'll see that those that were able to create a radical amount of success or live in a way where they're able to do things where other people can't are either consciously or some way somehow tapping into this understanding, and you have the power to do it. Abundance. So when it comes to creating success, creating the vision, it's important to remember this. The vision is yours. The success is yours. Fears, doubts, indecision, or limited thinking will cause you to materialize the equivalent in the external world to reveal to you about yourself. And it's not true. It is only true if you said it is true within. When you start to switch your thinking over to abundance thinking, you start to find unique and creative ways. You'll tap into the creative imagination, many ways to bring forth your vision. But you first have to define abundance. You have to reflect abundance onto the external world to have it materialize, and that comes from within your self-image. So it's important then to apply subconscious mind reprogramming, self-image work, to evolve our perspective to there is abundance. And here's what I've discovered about abundance. Spirit of harmony. You have to firmly believe, and you have experienced this in your past. The question is, do you experience this regularly? That you can have whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want, with joy, bliss, and ease in the spirit of harmony with all those that you deal with and divine and evolution, however way you want to look at it. You have to first believe it's possible. You have to see the examples materialize in front of you of its possibility. You have to reflect and give gratitude to the materialization of the spirit of harmony. You have to reflect back on your life and see where it was true, and then it will be so through habit again, again, and again. So remember one thing here. Success is measured by happiness. Consider whether fulfillment of the goal you have chosen will constitute success. What is success? If you possess health and wealth, but you have trouble with everybody, including yourself, yours is not a successful life. Existence comes, becomes futile if you cannot find happiness. When wealth is lost, you have lost a little. When health is lost, you have lost something of more consequence. But when peace of mind is lost, you have lost the highest treasure. Success should therefore be measured by the yardstick of happiness, by your ability to remain in peaceful harmony with the cosmic laws, harmony with all, harmony with divine. You have to believe it's possible even if right now the materialization of your reality, which is a thought process from within, is not revealing it to be so. Listen to this audio thousands of times. Read this kind of information and study this over and over again until your subconscious mind is saturated and begins to materialize it to be so in little glimpses and put emphasis on those glimpses, have gratitude for them, and it will begin to multiply. And you must do this with a high degree of will must exercise your willpower. See the image of God in all men is another way of seeing and living in abundance. Many people excuse their own faults but judge other persons harshly. You should reverse this attitude by excusing other shortcomings and by harshly examining your own. You are the cause within. All is materialized in the external world from within which comes from programming that you've learned in your past, and you might have been treated harshly by others, and you've internalized that and continue to materialize it through your subconscious programming, your self-image. But you can change it, because right now your consciousness is higher. 
you're listening to this information, you're internalizing it, you're accepting it, and you maybe you've already understood this and you're understanding it to a deeper level. When we talked about how information, the same bit of information, you'll understand and value even more. Well, remember this, when you judge a person harshly, you are judging yourself harshly and you're materializing them to be that way. This is another thing that I've discovered on this journey and I've seen this play out many times. You take one person and two people okay, interacting with that same person. One judges them harshly, the other person judges them from a place or reflects upon them from a place of abundance. They literally evoke the abundance in the other person. And that person is now abundant and happy and joyous to that person. And the other person who's angry and judges the other person harshly materializes and evokes that person to be harsh. Both are right from their perspectives. Put God power behind your efforts. Release for constructive purposes the power you already have and more will come. Move on your path with unflinching determination using all the attributes of success. Tune yourself with the creative power of spirit. You will be in contact with the infinite intelligence that is able to guide you and solve all problems. Power from the dynamic source of your being will flow uninterruptedly so that you will be able to perform creatively in the sphere of activity. And we've discussed this. So not only is the vision yours, but your ability to bring forth the vision is yours. And self-reflection and self-analysis is key because the external world is a materialization of your thoughts within. Just as all power, power lies in his will, so all spiritual and material gifts flow from his abundance, boundless abundance. In order to receive his gifts, you must eradicate from your mind all thoughts of limitation and poverty. I'm going to say this again. In order to receive his gifts, you must eradicate from your mind all thoughts, all thoughts of limitation and poverty. And now we have the tools to do so. Universal mind is perfect and knows no lack. To reach that never failing supply, you must maintain a consciousness of abundance. Even when you do not know where the next dollar is coming from, you should refuse to be apprehensive. See, if you don't know where it's going to come from and you start to go into doubtful thoughts, you will materialize it. That's the exercise, maintaining it. And now you have the tools. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.